going on YouTube? Um, today we are going to be talking about warding, um, how to ward, where you want to ward, why you're warding, um, and just sort of a general guide uh, for newer players so they can understand sort of the, the theory behind warding um, and just understand it better. Um, first I want to talk a little bit about you know why you're warding in general and sort of the value of warding. Um, warding is one of the most important things you can do in the game and buying ward wards are probably the most important thing that you can buy in a game and they're very overlooked at really a lot pretty high levels of play you know especially low levels of play but even up until like gold platinum even diamond people don't ward enough like they should um and it's really really important um and it's a really people don't understand the like the great value that you get out of wards right because wards only cost 50 gold which is basically nothing but for that 50 gold you can catch a rotation early which can save you from getting ganked um and dying which can save you from losing you know three waves of xp your camps um a lot of gold you know, all for that 50 gold that you're spending, it could end up saving you 400 gold and, you know, two objectives and, you know, a bunch of kills and stuff. So, it's an incredibly good value. It's really, really important to make sure you have good ward coverage on the map. And if you're looking for a way to improve really quickly and really easily, there's not a lot of ways, not a lot of just like magic changes that you can make that's going to instantly improve your game. But warding more and warding more effectively is one of those changes that will immediately make you a better player and make you have more success in Conquest. So... That's why I want to do this video. And so I'm going to sort of go through the different stages of the game, early, mid, and late, and talk about which um, characters are warding in which places and why. Um, so to start, every every role needs to be warding. There, there's no longer the time where like only the support and jungle have to ward. Like That is long gone. Every character has to be warding. Even if you're the hunter and your goal is just to buy all the items and get to late game, you still got to ward. Um, it's a team effort. Nobody's exempt from, war from warding. So... I'm going to start walking around the map here, and we're going to talk about, first, where you're going to ward before the game starts. You don't have to ward at the very beginning of the game, or like before the game starts, um, and I usually don't, but you can if you want to, um, especially if you're worried, if, if you're like being, if it's a really competitive game, or if you have any reason to believe that the other team might do something other than the traditional start, if you're worried about like an invade, or just some sort of unusual start for whatever reason. Um, then it, that's usually when you're going to want to put out wards in the beginning of the game. So, if you're on the jungle side, usually the people that will do this, by the way, in the beginning of the game are the jungle and the support. So, if you're on the jungle side and you're worried about the other team doing some sort of unorthodox jungle start, you're usually going to be warding on their speed buff, right? Because you're expecting them to start at their speed buff, and so if they're doing anything weird, you won't see them at the speed buff, and so that's going to be your hint that they're doing something unusual. So you want to have that ward there. Um, other options that you can place if you like buy two wards or something and you want to just have some early ward pressure You can put a ward right there above the mid camp That's just a good choke point where a lot of action happens So it's good to have vision there and you can also put a ward between the blue and speed buff um, So that you will know if they go from speed to blue and the reason you do that is if you're worried about them Clearing their speed buff and then coming down and wrath invading your blue buff or not It wouldn't be that path. It would be more like this um and if you're worried about that happening, then you have that ward there to, so that you, you won't see them basically go across here. Um, or if you do see them, you'll see them come down this way. So you'll know that they're invading your blue buff and they'll be ready for that. Um, on the support side, kind of the same deal. If you're worried about them doing something weird, you're going to be warding their red buff because that's where they're expected to start. So if they're not there, you know something's up. Um, also, if you are just looking to get some early ward coverage to prevent like really early ganks and rotations from the jungler and the mid player, um, then there are a few places you can ward. You can ward in this choke point right here, um, and this choke point right here, because that's where a lot of the rotations come through. Basically, any rotation, um, from the mid lane, you're going to catch that. You know, if they're coming up this way, you're going to catch it. If they come across this way, you're going to catch it. Even if they, you know, come up here and then... Oh, I can't do it, but if they like take this path where they kind of cut up this way through the middle there, you're still going to catch that if you place the ward in the right spot, because you're going to be putting it right here, and that ward is going to have vision of every path in this area to get to the lane. And then it's the same on the other side of the jungle. Um, other options that you have are you can ward closer to the mid lane right here in this choke point and right here in this choke point. Now there's both an advantage and a disadvantage to doing this. Um, the advantage is that if the mid and the or jungler or both rotate from the mid lane, you're going to catch them much earlier, um, so you have more time to get out, you know, because you're going to catch them right here instead of right here, and I mean, that's a difference of like three or four seconds, which is huge when you're trying to get away from a gank. The downside is that you're not going to catch every rotation, because let's say the mid and the jungle, like, go to back camps right here or something, and you're, like, pushed up in lane up here, and then they notice that, and they decide to rotate down this way. 
this ward right here is not going to catch that. So you're not going to catch every rotation, but the ones that you are most likely to catch are you're going to catch much earlier. So it's sort of a higher risk, higher reward sort of thing. Um, but those are the options that you have for warding in the early game. Um, and those are kind of the places that you want to do it. Again, that's probably going to come out of the jungle and the support. From there, by the time you've backed for the first time in pretty much any role, it's a good idea to start buying wards. Um, it doesn't matter what role you're playing, you want to have wards, and that first back is usually a good time to do it. And in general, I like to follow a rule of thumb that every time I back, I'm buying at least one ward, um, if not more than one. And so, from this point on, every role is going to be warding, and I'm going to talk about the different places that each role is going to, or, yeah, that each role is going to ward in and why. Um, so to start, I guess here I'll walk over to the dual lane. We're going to talk about the hunter. Um, and the support will also be... The support kind of bounces back and forth. But, or they're, they're kind of in the, the dual lane for a little bit. And then they're in the mid lane a little bit. So when I talk about the, the mid lane, this can also apply to the support. And when I talk about the hunter, this can also apply to the support. The support just kind of fills in the gaps. Um, but as a hunter over here... The reason that you're warding at this point is to avoid getting ganked, or if you do get ganked, you want to, to know that it's happening ahead of time so that you can survive. Because if a team rotates over and tries to gank you, and they don't kill you, then that means that they just lost a bunch of farm rotating over, you didn't lose any farm, you didn't die, they did, so now they're behind, you're ahead, it's, it's just, you know, it's a good thing. And conversely, if you don't ward and you die, then obviously you're going to get behind. So, that's why you're warding. So, you're basically looking at the same places that I talked about at the very beginning of the game for your wards. You can ward right here right here or close to the mid lane right there and there i already talked about the benefits um and downsides of either um usually as a hunter you're warding right here and here just because hopefully and i'll talk about this in a little bit your mid and jungler should have those other spots covered so you should be able to catch those rotations earlier and these are just to make sure that you catch every rotation you can also ward right in the middle right here i'm going to go walk over to it um you can also ward right here um reason being that sometimes the um like, let's say you're you're thinking that you're really aggressive, you're going to be pushed up a lot, and so you put a ward right here. Um, the jungler might, you know, rotate up through here or something like that, and you might want to be able to catch that rotation right there. Um, if you do place your wards really well, right, you know, right here and right here, you should be able to catch that rotation anyway, but just in case you're worried about that, you can push it right there, um, put another ward there or something. So it's just another option. Um, the last place that you might ward is the gold fury pit and the gold fury pit is something that you want to ward anyway um just because you want to have vision of that and i'll talk about that in a second but there's a second reason for warding the, the gold fury pit other than controlling the gold fury and that's if the other team has uh there are basically a couple assassins thor radis hosker and thanatos are the ones that come to mind there might be a couple more but those are the main ones um that have semi-global ultimates and all of their ultimates can reach the dual lane from the gold fury pit um and the reason that they often will alt from there is because if they alt from there they're far enough away that you won't hear them go into the air and so that means you're gonna have no warning when they come down on you um and you know if you are in the early game as a hunter and you get ganked by thor at level five and he hits his full combo on you and you're not ready you're going to die um so you and that's really important for thor to get that early kill with that early rotation so having that vision on the goal fairies so that you know when he's there and he's ulting you is going to be very important it's going to give you extra time to get out you're going to have your beads ready so you can react to the alt um, and it's just going to be really important. So that's another option if you're up against one of those characters. Um, so yeah, that's basically where you're warding as a hunter in the early game. Over here in the mid lane, we're talking about the mid and jungle. And again, I told you the support can kind of fill in the gaps here. Um, but there's basically five places that the mid and the jungle can ward. And they want to kind of cover these together. Um, so there's these four spots around the mid camps, above and beneath on each side, right in those choke points, um, where like the corners, you know, where everybody's filtering through those to kind of go anywhere. And then also at the top of the mid lane right here. Oh, it's not, it's not paying, but yeah, right there. Um, so I'm going to talk about each of these. So obviously you're looking for the choke points because that's where the most traffic is. You know, if anybody's going to get anywhere in, in the jungle from the mid lane, they have to go through one of those points. So you're going to catch the most rotations this way. So that's why you're picking those choke points. Um, so, but I want to talk about the two at the bottom first. Basically, these are your defensive wards. You know, if you're worried about getting rotated on by the solo lane um, or the dual lane, or if you are afraid that you're not going to have a lot of lane pressure and the other team might be rotating to the side lanes, you know, from the, from these, uh, I guess on their side would be these offensive positions where you're pressed under tower and they push you out and then rotate this way, you want to be able to catch out those rotations. Or, you know, if it's, you're afraid of a team doing mid camps and then coming around behind you like this, you want to catch those out. So that's sort of your defensive warding positions. Your offensive warding positions are, you know, right here and right here. So this is when, you know, you think you're going to have lane pressure or just you think that your team, the other team's going to be rotating through these areas more often. 
and you have those wards up there to catch those. And then the last place that you can ward is you can put one ward right at the top of mid lane right here. Um, and the reason that you put a ward here is that if you're not in lane and the other team is standing here clearing wave, you don't have minions on this part of the lane. You know, your minions are all the way down there. So you're not going to have vision of them. But if you have a ward here, now you are going to have vision of them. And then if they go right or left, you're going to know that they're rotating and you're going to know which way they go. So you can call that out. Um, now, you might think, okay, so if you can do that, which is one ward rather than warding twice, why not just do that every time? And again, there's benefits and uh What's the opposite of a benefit? I don't know. There's good and bad things to both. Um, so, the the plus side of putting a ward here, there's two plus sides. One is that you only have to use one ward and you can catch rotations to the right and left side. And the other thing is that nobody's ever going to counter ward this spot, right? Because think about if you're on this team, right? So now I'm switching sides. I'm on this side of the map, right? I see somebody put a ward right here. If I have a counter ward, oh, whoops. Yeah, sure. I could put a counter ward there and kill it, right? But now I have a ward sitting right here. And what good does this ward do me, right? Because if the other team is pushed up here, there's minions there, they're going to see them anyway, right? So, like, you're going to have vision of that spot anyway. Um, whereas on the other side of the lane, you don't have vision. So there's really no reason for the other team to counter ward this spot. So if you put a ward there, it's going to last the full two minutes. You know, nobody's going to kill it. So those are the benefits. The downside is that once a team, once somebody leaves a lane and goes right or left, as soon as they get to about right here or right here, now you don't know where they're going, right? So you, let's say, you know, somebody's in the mid lane, you see them on that ward, go to the right, but then you don't know whether they went to the right and went to their speed buff, or they went to mid camps, or they're going over to solo lane to kill your solo laner, right? So you have less information. Whereas if you ward right here, oh, well, if you ward in those choke points I talked about earlier, you're going to know once they get to this choke point whether they turned down the map, up the map, or kept going straight, and you're going to know exactly where they're going and why they're going there, right? Um, the downside is that, again, it takes two wards instead of one. And also, these are more advantageous places to counter ward because, you know, if you're looking at the defensive side, these are good places to have defensive wards. It gives the other team information when they have wards there, so they're more inclined to counter ward those spots, so you may end up getting those wards killed. So there's benefits and downsides to both. I do both depending on the situation, how many wards I have available to me, where the other wards are, what I'm worried about. So you can do both, but those are the places that you want to be warding in the mid and jungle and sort of the areas that you want to be controlling. The other thing, and again, support can do this too, is you want to make sure that you have control of the Gold Fury Pit anywhere from around three minutes into the game until basically like 25 minutes. Um, so now you're getting into the mid game and even into the late. Because the Gold Fury is the primary um, objective, basically, that you're going to be fighting over that can really turn the tide of the game. Um, I need to breathe for a second. I'm talking so fast. <sighs> okay, so... Um, the Gold Fairy is the main objective that you really, really have to keep control of. And you don't want, there's two reasons that you want to have it warded. One, you don't want a Gold Fairy to get snuck under your nose. Because if the other team just gets Gold Furies for free, they're just going to snowball the game. And they're going to end up winning fights before they even start, just because they have more items than you. So you always want to know if the other team's starting a Gold Fairy. Um, the other reason is that if you're um, trying to kill a Gold Fairy, you don't want the other team to have vision of you. And you also want to have other vision of the other team as they're coming to try and stop you, right? So basically, the typical way to ward up the Gold Fury Pit, um, and again, you know, support, jungle, mid, are all going to work together, even the hunter can to do this, is, you know, right here, you're going to have a sentry ward. Um, and there's two ways you can do this. One, you can put a sentry right here to get maximum vision of the area, um, or you can put a sentry literally right on top of the Gold Fury, because if you do it right, then the only way for the other team to kill it is to pull the Gold Fury and take damage while they're doing it. So it's kind of this cheeky, fun thing that some people like to do. Um, I do both, just depending on how I'm feeling. Um, but you want to have a ward on the Gold Fairies that you know if the other team is on the Gold Fairy, you have vision of them. The reason you want it to be a sentry ward is because this is the most hotly contested place to ward. So it's a really good chance that the other team's going to have a ward here. And if they do, you want to see that ward and kill it so that they no longer have vision and so that they can't kill your ward, right? So that's why you want to have a sentry here. Um, and then you're going to have regular wards or sentries if somebody else just happens to have a sentry sitting around. But usually these are going to be regular wards. You want one right there in that choke point because, again, there's two ways basically for the other team to get to the Gold Fairy pit. They can run right through here. Or they can run through this choke point. So no matter what path they take, whether they're coming from back camps in the red camp or mid lane or whatever, they're going to come through this point. Or if they're coming from the dual lane or the the, the hog, the boars or whatever, they're going to come through this point, right? So you're going to catch every rotation from right here and right here. So those are the other places that you want to have wards. If you if you have extra wards to burn, if your team is doing a really good job warding, you can ward up there too or over there just so that you have really good vision. 
Um, you can ward behind you if you're worried about the hunter sneaking behind you or something. But those first three that I showed you are the main places that you want to have wards around the gold fairy to make sure that you have control. Um, so this way, you know, if you're pulling the gold fairy or something, you know that the other team doesn't have a ward on you. Um, so they can't see, you know, the help that it's at or thing like that. And then if they do come to contest you, you know, they're either going to be coming, you know, this way or this way or this way or something like that, right? And you're going to see them coming so you can make a decision ahead of time what you want to do when they get there. You're prepared for when they get there. Um, so that way, you know, you don't have like, I don't know, like a Sylvanas just walk up on you with no, you're not prepared for it. And he just like alts all five of you. And then the rest of the team comes barreling in and you just all die. And then they get a gold fury for free, right? Like that's the worst thing that can happen on a gold fury. And the free it's free to prevent that or it costs you know 200 gold to prevent that um and you're gonna get more than that back from getting the gold fury and that's just by buying wards so that's how you're gonna control the gold fury um okay and then the last thing that i want to talk about is where you're warding in the soul lane i'm not even gonna walk over there it takes too long um so the soul lane there it's the same as the it's basically the hunter lane and the soul lane are basically just two solo lanes right so the soul lane it's the same theory as the hunter or the dual lane i guess you call it but it's really the hunter lane now um where there's basically three spots that, or there's a few spots that you're warning, but you're trying to catch rotations, right? So the first place that you're warning is right here in that choke point, um, and same right down here in that choke point. That's going to catch the rotations, you know, this way, this way, you know, all all different uh, places they can come. You know, they're not going to be able to get to the lane basically without um, going across one of your wards. Another place that you can ward is the enemy blue buff, or um, conversely, your blue buff if you're worried about getting invaded or if you want to invade them. Um, and you want to know when they're on their blue buffs, so you have an option for that. Those are like aggressive. <laughs> I sound like DM Brandon. Thanks, man. DM Brandon's way smarter than me, but I try. Um, those are like aggressive uh, and defensive places you can ward as well. And then the last place, kind of like on the, the hunter side um, with warding the gulf here, you can ward the fire giant if you're worried about the Thor or the Thanatos or the Ratatoskr ganking your lane and, you know, alting from there. You'll have that advanced notice and you can get in position to. You know, or just get ready basically to avoid those ganks. So those are the places that you're looking toward in the solo lane. Um, you can also, if if your team is not doing a good job of warding the mid lane and you want to catch out rotations earlier, again, you can take uh, the initiative to ward in those two spots right there as well. But hopefully your team is going to cover that and you can just worry about warding your side of the map right here and here. Um, yeah, so sort of in the laning phase and into the mid phase, that's where each of the roles are going to be warding. Um, and then in the late game, you're not really looking to catch out rotation so much anymore because everybody's kind of grouped up. Um, so there's a few different places that you're going to be warding, but they're sort of for different reasons. The first place is the fire giant. Um, the fire giant is sort of the late game objective. So it serves, it's the late game version of the gold fairy where this is the main objective that everybody's contesting. And so you're basically doing the same thing on the fire giant that you did on the gold fairy. You're putting a sentry right there and then you're putting wards right there in that choke point and right up here in this choke point. And that way you catch all the rotations coming in. You make sure that they don't have vision of you. Um, and even more so than the Gulf Fury, it's really highly likely that anywhere from 20 minutes and beyond, there's gonna be a sentry ward right there. So making sure that you put a sentry and not a regular ward there is gonna be very advantageous. Uh, and it's also worth the gold because you spend 120 gold on a sentry, but if you then kill a ward with that sentry, you get 50 gold back, right? So you're just getting back on your investment already. It's so cheap, it's worth it. Um, so that's the, the main place that you're going to ward in the late game. And I already kind of talked about how it helps you with objective control. It works the same as the Gulf here. You're doing it for the same reason. Um, other places that you're going to ward, you can just still, if you have a lot of wards and your team's doing a really good job of warding, just ward in the various choke points around the map, just so you know where the other team is, because the team's going to be traveling in a pack and just knowing where they are is very important. The last, actually, I guess there's two more reasons that you'll ward in the late game. Um, if you're losing the game and the other team is pressed up on your phoenixes and they're sort of, you know, oh, you got to be kidding me. It canceled out again. All right. I'm not redoing this video, um, but you can, oh, but I have to. Um, okay. I'm just going to restart and I'm going to talk as I go because that's really obnoxious. Um, so there's two more reasons that you're going to ward at the end of the game. Um, the first is to deal with split pushers and the second is to deal with an assault on your base basically. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about split pushing. Split pushing is one of the most annoying, obnoxious, and just mind numbing tactics that the other team can use against you. And it's so annoying because you can be winning a game, you know, top to bottom, front to back, and still end up losing just because somebody split pushed. Um, because even if you're winning every team fight, if some, you know, a Scotty or a Bakasura or a Loki or a Bastet or something like that, is just sitting in the back, you know, letting their team lose fights, but taking three towers and a Phoenix for it, 
then it's like, why did you bother winning that fight? You just lost half your map, right? And it, it's just annoying. And so you don't want to let that happen. You want to know when somebody's split pushing so you can react before they start taking all your towers. And so the best, the absolute best way to do this is to have ward coverage on the map. This is why split pushing is so, so, so good against unorganized teams and against at the lower levels, basically, because people don't ward or they don't ward effectively. Um, and that just makes it so easy for split pushers because they can just run around in the jungle wherever they want and split push for free. So I'm going to talk about where you're going to ward to stop this. Um, it depends on what stage of the game you're in. But usually if you're in the late game and you're worried about split pushing, um, you want to ward right here and right here. Because at this point, you're worried about them split pushing your phoenixes. Really, like That's really the big target that you want to not let them split push. Because if they split push a phoenix, not only are they getting gold, but they're spawning fire minions in that lane. So then you have automatic lane pressure in that lane you got minions on your on your titan it's just bad news you don't want to let those phoenixes go down without a fight so you want to make sure that you know when they're going to attack those and so the a lot of times what people will do is they'll ward in the lanes you know they'll be like i'm going to ward right here and right here and right here so that way i know when they're running up to the phoenix right there's no reason to do that and the reason is that you're always going to have minions here anyway right um so by the time they get there the minions are going to see them. If they're killing minions to get to your phoenix, you're going to see them anyway, right? But usually what they're going to do is they're not going to kill the, the minions. They're going to run through the jungle, right, up through here, and then just cut in the lane behind the phoenixes, right, or behind the minions, and just go straight to the phoenix. Because the characters that are split-pushing your phoenixes are characters whose kits are designed so that they basically can tank the phoenix long enough to kill it themselves. They don't need the minions' help, so they're not wasting their time killing minions. So that's why you want to ward right here and right here, because no matter where they go in the jungle, they have to cut through one of those two spots in order to get to your phoenix without running into minions. So you're guaranteed to catch them out, and then you can back and hopefully get to the phoenix before they're able to kill it. Um, the other important thing is that you want to make sure that these are sentry wards, um, because oftentimes a common tactic from split pushing is that they will buy wards themselves and buy teleport so that way when they want to split push instead of having to you know spend a minute and a half running all the way through their jungle to get there they just buy a ward put it there when they're split pushing and then they kill a tower they back to base and then they teleport right back in and kill another phoenix or something right so they're just immediately back there so having a sentry ward there means that if they have a ward you're going to kill it so that way they can't you know teleport to the spot so it's sort of two ways to prevent that split push um same thing over here the other reason that you're warding the late game is if all your towers are dead and the other team, you know, you're losing the game, the other team is pushed up on your phoenixes and they're starting to siege them down, you want to have wards in the same place. You want to have them right there and you want to have them right there. And that's because this is sort of a, like, a safe zone that the team can kind of just run back and forth here. They can split up. But this is sort of where they're going to be moving around. You know, they might send one person over here, a couple people to mid lane, or they might send a couple back and then try to fake you out. And then you guys all run over here to defend this Phoenix. And then they cut back and just blow up the mid tower or the mid Phoenix before you can get back there, right? And so you don't, you want to make sure the way to avoid this and the way to most effectively defend against a late game siege on your Phoenixes is to always know where everybody on the other team is. And everybody on the other team if they're not up on your phoenixes, is going to be hanging out in the jungle right around here. And so having ward coverage there means you're always going to know where everybody is, you know where they're going, and you know how to effectively split up your forces or group them up in a certain place to defend against the siege. And so that's the other place that you're going to be warding at the end of the game. Um, and then the last place to ward at the end of the game is if you're a scumbag and you're split pushing, you're going to ward right there and right there so you can teleport to wards and win the game by yourself. Um, and you know what? I hate split pushing. It's a valid tactic because it works even at the highest level, you know, DJ Pernick is, you know, split push with Bastet in an SPL game or like super regionals or something and like won the game by himself. So obviously it works and I'm not, you know, I'm not saying don't try something if it works, but man, I hate split pushers so much. Um, but yeah, so that's it for this video. Sorry about that little glitch there where the game reset because I wasn't moving around. I was talking too much, um, but hopefully it wasn't, you know, it didn't distract too much and hopefully this was, you know, informative. Um, if you guys like the video, go ahead and please hit that like and button and the subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, other videos that you want to see, suggestions, you know, God guides or God gameplays that you want to see, just let me know in the comments. Um, and of course, as always, go ahead and check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash steelorange3398. That's where I'm filming this now. And thanks for watching.